There are many bizarre things within the orbit of our sun that astronomers have yet to figure out. Here are some of the strangest unexplained phenomena in our solar system. One of the oddest moons in our solar system is Miranda, the smallest and the most innermost moons of Uranus. Miranda has the most extreme and varied topographies of any object in the solar system. Its surface is full of craters, cliffs and deep canyons giving it the look of a patchwork moon. There are a few theories about why Miranda resembles something that a mad scientist might have rapidly sewn together. One is that Miranda may have suffered a series of disastrous impacts, leaving it permanently scarred. Uranus itself was most likely faced with several collisions at one point, resulting in its sideways orbit, so this theory seems fitting. Another theory is that the force of Uranus's gravity caused Miranda to have unusual volcanic activity, giving an otherwise smooth surfaced moon its odd bumpy shape. Cyclones exist on most planets that have an atmosphere and moisture beneath their clouds including our very own Earth. These storms come by many names on this planet. Depending on where you live, you may be better familiar with them as hurricanes or typhoons. Generally speaking, the cyclones on Earth have a fairly rounded shape with an eye in the center. But that isn't true for the storms on some gas giants. A strange phenomenon about the cyclones on Jupiter was recently discovered. These storms often take on hexagonal shapes, forming a honeycomb-like structure around both of the gas giant's poles. Jupiter isn't the only gas giant whose storms seem to favor a six-sided angular shape. In 1988, scientists discovered a giant hexagonal cyclone on one of Saturn's poles. The beehive-like pattern on Jupiter seems unique, however. Theories have been proposed as to what causes these oddly angular storms but for the most part they remain a mystery. Imagine that instead of having its highest mountain peaks scattered on different parts of its surface, Earth had all its tallest mountains form one long continuous chain across the equator. This is essentially what happened on Iapetus, the third largest moon of Saturn. This long mountain ridge has a peak altitude of 12 miles, which is more than twice that of Mount Everest. This chain of mountains also gives the moon its distinct walnut shape. Scientists still aren't sure why this ridge exists. Some think that it may have been the remains of a ring a bit like Saturn's own rings that eventually came crashing down to the surface. Others think that it may be made out of debris from a former moon. What is clear though is that between this and Iapetus's bizarre half-dark half-light coloration, this moon may well be one of the strangest objects in the solar system. According to some astronomers, there may be an undiscovered ninth planet in the outer region of the solar system. Astronomers have discovered some odd gravitational patterns in objects within the Kuiper Belt, a large asteroid field beyond the orbit of Neptune, which could be explained by the presence of a large planet called Planet 9. These gravitational anomalies in question are the strange clustering of objects for a group of extreme trans-Neptunian objects that orbit the Sun at distances averaging more than 250 times of the Earth. 
Getting solid proof of Planet 9 however is difficult because it lies in the outer regions of the solar system, making it hard for even our most advanced telescopes to locate. Astronomers have estimated that this planet if it exists would be an icy world approximately three times the size of Earth. If a planet is far enough away from the sun, you would expect it to be an icy hillscape. For example, in Pluto, the warmest location is about negative 223 degrees Celsius and scientists think the dwarf planet once had rivers of liquid nitrogen crossing its surface. Neptune is officially the farthest planet away from the sun. Although its surface temperatures typically doesn't get any higher than negative 200 degrees Celsius, astronomers don't believe that Neptune is really quite as cold as it should be. This is because Neptune somehow radiates more than twice the amount of energy it gets from the Sun. Astronomers still aren't sure why this is. One theory speculates that this may be due to Neptune's diamond rains. Neptune's atmospheric pressure causes the methane in its atmosphere to compress into diamonds. These diamonds then rain down, producing heat from friction caused as they fall in the heavy atmosphere. This in turn explains the unusual amount of energy radiating from this otherwise very cold planet. Methane is a naturally occurring gas and a common byproduct of life. However, methane can also be created through non-biological means, so it doesn't guarantee the existence of life. It is abundant in many planets of the solar system and most of the larger moons. Mars also has methane but nothing quite like the quantity of methane found on Earth. But the small amount of methane found on Mars is strange because the quantity varies quite frequently. NASA's rovers have discovered that this variation in atmospheric methane levels seems to happen based on the seasons. Scientists have a few theories about what causes these fluctuations. From methane being absorbed and released by rocks on the surface depending on the season to changes being caused by life such as bacteria that may be living beneath the Martian surface. Our solar system is a bit strange compared to other star systems. While other star systems typically have similarly sized planets that are regularly spaced out in their orbits, our solar system has no regularity in size or space. For example, Jupiter, the largest planet, is more than 28 times the diameter of Mercury. From a volume standpoint, we could fit over 24,000 Mercuries inside Jupiter. In addition, the spacing between the planets doesn't show nearly the same connection as the spacing in other star systems. Astronomers aren't sure what makes our solar system so different, but some speculate that Jupiter and Saturn's impressive gravitational pull may have something to do with it. The ashen light of Venus is a phenomenon that lights up the dark side of the planet, making it visible to observers looking through telescopes. First observed in 1643, it has been described as being similar to Earth's shine, which occurs when sunlight reflected from the Earth illuminates the dark parts of the Moon. This makes sense in the case of moons such as ours, as they are close enough to a large planet and the light from the Sun can reach them at odd angles by bouncing off the planet they orbit. However, this explanation doesn't make sense with Venus because it has no large orbiting body nearby. Astronomers have tried to photograph the ashen light, 
but sightings are so unusual and random that all attempts so far have failed. Many have given up trying to prove that the phenomenon exists. Even so, there are hundreds of reports of the ashen light, from modern amateur stargazers to the 17th century astronomer Giovanni Battista Riccoli. This clue is so elusive and contested that it has been called the Loch Ness of Venus. The sun's surface is extremely hot at around 5,500 degrees Celsius. The less visible atmosphere above the surface known as the corona, however, can get even harder. The temperature here can reach anywhere between 1 to 10 million degrees Celsius. The sun's corona is so faint that you can only see it during a solar eclipse. This makes one wonder, why is it so much harder than the sun's brighter surface then? Scientists aren't sure as of now, but one theory is that it may be caused by the millions of nano-sized solar flares that pop up on the sun's surface every second, transferring energy from the surface to the atmosphere above. Pluto, the dwarf planet, is so small that it barely has the gravity necessary to hold onto its atmosphere. As a result, Pluto is constantly losing hundreds of tons of its primarily nitrogen atmosphere as it loops around the Sun. With this in mind, you might wonder why Pluto hasn't run out of nitrogen yet. Scientists ponder the same thing. Their best guess is that some sort of hidden geological process must be creating all the spare nitrogen but the exact nature of that process remains a mystery.